So here we have another example where the application of Newton's second law is relevant. And just as a reminder, Newton's second law states that the sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration. And in this example, we want to determine the force required to lift a mass at a certain rate. So we have a force up here in the top left hand corner, which is being used to lift the mass m. Now there's a few different things happening here. We've got some information about the velocity of the mass. The initial velocity is 0 meters per second. So at the start here, our velocity is 0 meters per second. And our final velocity is 3 meters per second. So we know that that mass is accelerating. And it also specifies that that acceleration is taking place in 6 seconds. T equals 6 seconds. But as we look at this setup here, the force in the top left hand corner needs to do three things. First of all, it needs to accelerate the mass from 0 meters per second to 3 meters per second in 6 seconds. But as we can see here, it's also going to need to balance the weight of the mass. And the reason it needs to balance the weight of the mass is because if we didn't have a force at least equivalent to the weight of the mass, then that mass would be accelerating downwards. So if we disregard the acceleration for the moment, in order just to hold that mass stationary, the force would have to equal the weight. But just to reiterate, that would just be to hold that mass stationary or suspended in the air. We've got more happening than that because we also want our mass to be accelerating. So the force is going to be greater than the weight. Now there's one more thing that we need to take into consideration. We have a resistive force due to friction in that pulley. So let's bring all of this together. The force that we're trying to calculate, F, needs to first of all balance the weight. It also needs to overcome friction. And it also needs to cause that mass to accelerate. And I'm going to call that F subscript A for the force to cause acceleration. Providing our force in the top left hand corner does all of those three things, that mass will accelerate upwards. So let's determine each of those components. First of all, let's determine the weight. Weight is mass times gravity. Our mass here is given as 12 kilograms and gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. Well, 12 times 9.81 gives us a weight of 117.72. Newtons. Next we move on to the friction. Now the friction's not given here, but let's say for example the frictional force in that pulley was 25 newtons. So what that means is, as well as applying enough force to balance the mass, we would have to apply an additional 25 newtons to get that mass moving at constant speed or without accelerating. So we're going to need to include our friction force 25 newtons because that 25 newtons needs to be overcome just to get that mass moving. But we also want that mass to accelerate. So this is our force for acceleration. And that force is going to equal the mass times the acceleration of the mass. Well as it stands at the moment we don't know the acceleration of the mass but we can calculate it because from our equations of motion we know that acceleration is V minus u divided by t and in this case we have some numbers we have three meters per second for v the object starts stationary so the initial velocity is zero and our time is six seconds so here we have an acceleration of three divided by six which is 0 0.5 meters per second squared so now we can calculate the force required to accelerate our mass because the force required to accelerate the mass is our mass of 12 kilograms times our acceleration of 0.5 meters per second squared, giving us 6 newtons. Now finally, to make all of that happen, to overcome friction, to balance the weight and to cause the acceleration, we're going to need to add those three forces together to determine our final force F. And I'm going to show this calculation under the pulley diagram. We've got F equals weight plus 
resistive force plus force for acceleration. And adding all of that together, we get 117.72 plus 25 plus 6. Therefore, the force required is 148.72 newtons. So, we used Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration, in order to determine our acceleration force. But we also applied Newton's first law, because every force has an equal and opposite force. This method that we've used here is something called D'Alembert's principle, and it's a way of combining forces in order to determine the force required to cause an action. So this time we're going to reframe our question slightly to prove that Newton's second law holds true for this example. So what we're going to assume this time is we're going to assume that we've been given the force being applied to the cable and that force is 148.72 newtons. So what we're saying is our force applied in the top left hand corner is 148.72 newtons. We've also been given the friction force, and the friction force is 25 newtons, and friction opposes motion. So what that means is that force in the top left hand corner, F, needs to oppose the resistive force, F subscript R. They act in opposite directions. And we also have the weight of our block, which is also going to be acting in the opposite direction. So once again, let's calculate the weight of our block, mass times gravity. The mass is 12 and gravity is 9.81. 12 times 9.81 is 117.72 newtons. So this time we have all of the forces, but what we're trying to calculate is the final velocity v of that mass after it's been accelerated for six seconds. So we're trying to find the velocity here, v equals question mark. So in this example, we know all of the forces and we know the mass of the object. So we can use Newton's second law in order to determine the acceleration. So let's do that now. We have the sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration. Well, the sum of our forces is our force F in the top left hand corner minus our resistive force, which acts in the opposite direction, minus our weight. So the sum of the forces becomes F minus F R minus W. So all we're doing is balancing our forces and that's going to equal our mass times acceleration. It's important to note that the acceleration is going to occur in the direction of the net force. So let's run our numbers. We've got 148.72 minus 25 minus 117.72 and that's going to be equal to our mass which is 12 times our acceleration which is what we're trying to find. Well if we simplify our left hand side we've got 148.72 minus 25 minus 117.72 that's going to equal 6. So in this case 6 equals 12a. Our right hand side stays the same. Now to get a on its own we need to divide each side of that equation by 12 and we'll get A equals 6 over 12 which is 0.5 metres per second squared. Now as our net force acts in the direction of F this way, the net force acting on the mass is going to act upwards because all that pull is doing is redirecting the force. So our mass is going to accelerate upwards. So we know the magnitude of the acceleration, we know the time, we know the initial velocity and we're trying to find the final velocity. So we need an equation that contains u, v, t and a. And that equation is a equals v minus u over t. We want to get v on its own. So the first thing that we need to do to each side of that equation is times it by t. And we'll be left with a t equals v minus u. But the question specifies that u equals 0. So this term here is going to disappear and we're just going to be left with v 
equals AT. A we know is 0 0.5 because we calculated it. T is given in the question, 6 seconds. So our final velocity is 3 metres per second. So up here on our diagram, we can add V equals 3 metres per second. And I'm sure you recall that that was the same final velocity that we had when we approached the question in a different way.